I can bring my highlights down doing this and I can protect my shadows like that. And it does work, but there's a much better way. Two things beginners struggle the most with are color separation and protecting their highlights and shadows while keeping a healthy contrast in their image. You don't want an image that's too washed out and you don't want an image that has a tint and feels like a mistake. My goal from this video is to give you killer tools that will significantly improve the quality of your grades. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future content and let's jump in. This footage is shot on Red Helium in Log and let's look at the note tree. So I already went ahead and prepped the stuff that's not gonna matter with what we're gonna be focusing on. So let's just quickly look at it. I'm gonna be working in Scene Refer DaVinci White Gamut color space. And then on the tail end, I built the look based on Resolve's Kodak 2383. So that LUT can be found right here and it is available with any Resolve version that you might be using. And in order to use it properly, you have to set your output gamma to Cineon Film Log. If you have any questions about that, watch this video link up top. And then finally, I'm using a LUT corrector because with Resolve's LUT, if you look at the scopes right here, they're still pretty lifted. And I don't really love that, so I went ahead and corrected it. Then we're just using film box for some texture, which is just grain, but again, you don't have to. And here I created a custom contrast, just proper tone mapping with where I want everything to sit. And then here I just did a simple balance and that's about it. So at this point, what a beginner would do is they would create a new node and here they would want to protect their highlights, right? So they will use their gain to bring that down. And the problem with gain is like, look at how much it's affecting your overall image. And then even if you take your gamma and pull it up a little bit like that and bring your gain down, like just look at how much of the juice you took out of your image. And then what they would do to protect their shadows is like they would use their lift and bring up the image, something like that. And this is where we are. And then what they would do is create a new node. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt that they know how to properly use qualifiers. So they will create a layer mixer. And then down here, they'll go under their key and they'll select, let's just say a skin. And then if I hit shift H, we can see what we're selecting. And let's just go ahead and clean it up a little bit, right? So they would do something like that. And then they will just take their offset and add a little bit of more color to the skin tones and it looks kind of nice. And then they will go and do the opposite and uh, just add a little bit more teal in the rest of the image. So like, you know, let's just push it a little bit because beginners push everything. Okay. So if we do before and after, like on the surface, it looks kind of nice, but you can already spot the problem right here on the cheek, what's happening. And then over here, how the image is cracking. So these two spots you can already detect, but it gets worse when I do a playback. Like look at how we're seeing all this bad key chatter and that becomes a problem. So that's why this method is completely out of the question. Now let's create a new version and now let's look at it from a mature colorist point of view. They would create a node prior to this one and they will call it highlights. And then here what they would do is they would go under their qualifier and this is what would happen. I'm going to hit shift H and then I'm just going to select my highlights. Okay, so something like this. I'm just going to select my highlights and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my gain and I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And if I do before and after, like look at how gentle and subtle this effect is. Um, and if I were to show you my waveform, just look at what's happening and how clean that is, right? So they beautifully protected their highlights. This is absolutely gorgeous step. It works excellent. And then what they would do is in their balance, they can just go under their log wheels, use their shadow and bring that up a little bit. Okay, not too much, but just a little bit. So even if I do something like that, you can see how much I brought that up and this is before and then this is after and we started to get some information in the hair. And for color separation, instead of jumping straight into qualifier, which should never be the first step, they would go ahead and use their HSL curve. So here um, I can click right here and then 
gently lift it up a little bit and then that way i have a really nice color going on instead of this gunky yellowish green that was happening before and then i can click over here somewhere and then i can do the same thing and just kind of add that teal sort of look okay so that works well but if now i want to add saturation to these same hues i have to go in a different tab hue versus saturation i have to click right here and now add saturation or pull saturation whatever i want to do and then i have to do the same thing here okay and then if i want to bring the luminance down or up i have to go to hue versus luminance and then i have to click here again and either i can make it brighter or make it darker for deeper colors so i have to do all of that okay so just keep that in mind I know many colors that are still using the ladder method, including myself, until Resolve came out with the following tools. And the first tool that I would use to protect my highlights and shadows would be HDR palette. Setting up your color management is necessary for it to work properly since it is a content aware tool. Lift Gamma again and your log wheels work generically whether they're working with Rec. 709 content or log content, whereas HDR palette has, if you click on these three dots, you can go in and select each color space and gamma, depending on the type of camera you're using or color space, if you're in scene referred. But we don't have to do that because we already selected that here. We have a proper pipeline going. So we can bypass selecting it individually and just jump right in and it's gonna take the information from the prior node and work in DaVinci White Gamut. Too many people make the mistake and they think HDR palette means it can only be used for HDR content or higher bitrate footage. That is absolutely not true. Think of HDR palette as lift gamma gain and log wheels on steroids. At first glance, it looks similar to lift gamma gain or log wheels with more options. It's broken into six zones. So you got your blacks, darks, shadows, lights, highlights, and then specular. You can look at it as Ansel Adams zone system. Our black would be the black right here. And then near black and textured black would be dark. And then average dark materials and average dark foliage would be shadow. And then your middle gray and average Caucasian is going to be light. And then your very light skin and lightest tone would be your highlight. And then slight tone without texture. And pure white is going to be specular. So that's how I would break it down. And besides having your exposure and RGB controls, you also have saturation control per zone. Creating clean looks has never been easier. Now let's see what's happening under the hood. So let's go back to this image. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my highlights and I'm gonna try to pull that down. And just look at this result that we're getting. It is absolutely unbelievable. And if I hit shift H, you can see what's happening. It's basically doing the same thing that we did in the pro version. Whereas here, depending on which zone I'm in, let's just say if I go to my shadows, like it'll change the zone. In other words, it's creating very smooth, chatter-free qualifier presets for each zone that are ready to go. And if you want to modify it, you can click that button and you can, but if you set up your pipeline properly like we have, everything should be in the right place. So now if I come out and you just look at what happened, how much time we have saved instead of manually doing this process. And the best thing about it is that the exposure everywhere here works in like stops, like just like a camera stop. So here I can actually just go and drop it down about a full stop and not go any further than that. And it just kind of makes it simple to, to work that way instead of just kind of winging it and then parking it somewhere, okay? So that's what I would do for my highlights. And now for my shadows and just start lifting them up. I'm just looking at his eyes and a little bit of hair and I'm just gonna go, okay, what if we just do quarter of a stop? Again, that makes it really, really simple. And we brought back our shadows without losing our contrast. Remember like what was happening in the beginner's version? We lost the entire personality, the look of our image. 
Here, we're keeping the thickness of our image and then preserving our highlights and shadows on top of it. If by watching this, you're realizing that this one tip is gonna save you so much time, then I have exciting news for you. We're running a flash sale and from now until March 24th, you can save $400 on my masterclass. Let's see what's inside FCM. 30 plus hours of on-demand lessons, 100 gigs of professionally shot practice footage, access to an exclusive Facebook group, weekly tailor-made feedback, $1,000 cash prize, discounts on major third-party plugins, Film Convert, Dehancer, Color Lab AI, Motion VFX, ShotDeck.com. We have over 5,500 students. Our students are working with brands like Nikon, Porsche, Company3, DJI, F1. To help you make a decision, I'm throwing in a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's literally a no-brainer. You're gonna see a link up top and in the description, so go ahead, sign up, and let's get back to the video. Moving on to the second tool that will replace HSL curves and qualifiers, sort of. I'm talking about Color Warper. This tool is also built on the same new and improved engine as the HDR palette. It's a more advanced and efficient way of creating color separation. Instead of going through each option individually, like I showed you hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, here you can affect hue, saturation, and luma all at once with a single click. These dots right here represent the hue range. And what I like to do is I like to set them to 16 by 16 for more granular control. And then the one thing that you have to keep in mind is, let's just say if I click right here and move this around, it's manipulating the entire hue range. And that's not necessarily great, especially this and this are really close. Wood and skin tones will always be very close. So to have that separation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on auto lock. I'm going to activate this and I'm going to set that to three points. So now basically wherever I click, it's going to create three points to the bottom and three points to the top and it's going to lock it. Okay. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. So now let's go ahead and click right here. And what I want to do is I want to swing the hue and I want to make it, give it a nice warm color, something like that. And then at this point, I can just go, do I want to give it more saturation, less saturation? So maybe let's just, for the sake of the tutorial, kind of exaggerate it. And now Luma value. Do, do I want to bring it up? Do I want to kind of bring it down? Okay. So something like that. Look at how powerful this is and how clean this is. Okay. So, and now let's click right here and then give it that teal that we were trying to create. This is kind of cool. And this is doing it in a very organic way. It's not pushing it over the top, okay? Something that I actually like a lot. We can also click right here and then just use our Luma. What do we want to do? Do we want to pull up the skin a little bit? Even something like that. It just gives it a nice pop. I like that. I don't necessarily need to put more color into the skin. And now if I go back and show you the previous pro version, you can see, clearly see the difference, how big of a jump this is. And another thing that I want to point out is that why HDR palette is so superior is like, look at the highlights and how much more information we brought out and yet we retain the punch, right? Same thing is happening in the shadows, but so much more information came out. Like, look at this and how natural this looks like as if this is how it was lit, where this looks so dull. Same thing with the colors. Like, look at what we did right here. Even if I turn this on and off, you can see how big of a difference it's making and how clean this is compared to that. And then forget about this version, right? Like the beginner's version, like the mistakes that were made here. So let's compare the three versions side by side. And you can clearly see the power of these two tools and why you need to get on it ASAP. That said, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the bell icon if you like this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.